Red Bun means we're live. Some casual takes with your boy, Steven Pepper. Here to get some takes off my chest. What's up, everybody? I know, I know. Listen, 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 listen. listen. I've been gone for a while. I know. I suck. Listen, I told you guys last episode, I went to formal with my fraternity. I came back. All of a sudden, my professors were like, we're going to take our exams this week. And I got a lot of projects that I had to carry my group in and did by myself. It was a lot of work. I couldn't really watch the games. I did watch the games, but not enough for me to do an episode on them. But I'm here now. And I don't, you guys can't see it, but I'm wearing a LeBron James sunshine shirt my roommate gave me for uh, my birthday. It's the best shirt in my collection now. I, I love him for that. But I'm here now. And this week we're back. I just got like one or two exams and I'm moving out of school. So we're going to be more back into this NBA playoff grind. But I do got two topics I want to talk about today. And I'm a little under the weather too. First is the draft lottery. So I was watching the NBA draft lottery right before the Knicks Pacers game. Sorry. And especially if you are a Pistons or Hornets fan, the main takeaway is that the draft lottery is just awful. There is no good reason why the draft lottery should exist in the NBA. It's just a joke, man. In no world, in any sport, should a fringe playoff team, would a fringe playoff team's own pick be number one overall? No sport, no world. Like, like, does Adam Silver, do they not understand that the lottery actually makes it harder for poor teams to rebuild? It basically punishes teams for being bad while also giving teams like the Hawks a chance at a top five pick when they have no business being there. No business. I, I just feel so bad, man. Detroit, Charlotte, two of the three worst records in the association. They're picking five and six. I'm pissed if those are my teams. Are you serious? I just watched my team be win 14 games, and I'm picking at five overall. I am pissed if I was a Pistons fan. And, and I see here you go. I see all these people on social media defending the lottery, like, oh, the lottery deters tanking is doing a good job. Hey, buddy, then what are these bad teams supposed to do? Uh, win games? I got news for you then. Um, these teams aren't winning games, not because they're tanking. They just flat out suck. The Pistons lost 28 games in a row. NBA record, back-to-back -back worst records in the league. They have only just one true asset. That's Cade Cunningham. He is literally the meme of the Lamborghini parked outside a trailer home. They desperately needed to pick in at least the top three, not just not one, just at least top three to better rebuild. And yet, a ping-pong ball placed them at pick five back-to-back -back years. That is a joke. The draft in any sport is supposed to bring some hope to franchises and their fans after a bad stretch of losing. But for some reason, in the National Basketball Association, the futures of these poor teams and their fans are at the mercy of ping-pong balls. Ping-pong balls. Are you serious? And draft position absolutely matters in the NBA. This is a sport where outside of the first three picks, it's really hit or miss. They can either be a star, but they have a more chance of being a career backup or speaking Chinese in two years. Like, if the Pistons desperately needed to be in top three, especially for these teams that aren't really good at drafting. And now the Pistons join a group of six straight years of where the worst record doesn't own the number one pick. That's absolutely a joke. In what sport should the worst team not own the best pick. That's what the draft was designed for in sports. It's not to reward, but to have for parity reasons so teams just aren't bad forever, that the worst team in the league gets the first chance at the best young talent coming into the league. There should be no reason why a bottom three team like the Hornets does not have a top five pick. But I do have a compromise. I do, because I'm a compromisable person, if that's even a word. Let's have we'll, we'll have a lottery for the bottom five teams. So for all the people who still think we desperately need a lottery in this league, because teams tank for a top pick, we'll have we'll have the lottery for the five worst teams. The five worst teams are thrown into a lottery that way, so we can still deter tanking. They all have an equal chance. And the number one pick is not guaranteed for the worst team, but everyone else, it's record based. Because I swear to God, there should be no chance that a 41-win Rockets team that could have went to the play-in is drafting third overall 
or the Los Angeles Lakers are in 2019 now benefited me because they used that pick to trade for Anthony Davis is drafting fourth overall when they won like almost 40 games or when the Hawks who went to the Eastern Conference Finals just three years ago went to the playoffs back-to-back years following that and now we're a play-in team this year won, won almost 40 games 500 basketball they're, they have a 3% chance at a number one pick, and they get it. Absolutely, that should not happen. I think the ping pong balls are an absolute joke. The future of these bad teams are at the mercy of ping pong balls. If I'm a Pistons fan, 14 wins, 28 straight games of losing. I even did a whole episode on that Pistons team, by the way, because it was such an awful sight in this league. And you're telling me they can't get a top three pick? If I was a deputy commissioner yesterday, and that's the guy who announces the lottery picks uh, after the ping pong balls, I, I don't think I would have ever been able to keep a straight face announcing the Atlanta Hawks getting the number one overall pick. What a joke. The lottery absolutely needs to go. And um, I also want to talk about a coach firing, too. Happened over the weekend. So the Phoenix Suns. They fired Frank Vogel, their head coach, last week. And this is coming after being swept in the first round um, by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now they bring in former NBA champion Mike Budenholzer, who's also a coach who's been fired a couple of times, like Frank Vogel. Um, Budenholzer was fired from the Milwaukee Bucks last season after they had a disappointing playoff run. And now he comes in to kind of get a grip on the situation that they think Frank Vogel couldn't have. But I want to come on here and get this straight. You know, I, I want to get this straight. Does the Suns firing... Vogel affect KD's legacy too? And then because because all I heard, I heard all that BS about the ham firing on the first takes of the world. Oh, another coach fired on LeBron's watch. That's why he's not the GOAT. But all I heard on the Vogel firings was that oh, Vogel wasn't a good coach, and the Suns owner sucks at building a team. No, 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 no. Where is the smoke for Kevin Durant? Because I got some. Since leaving Golden State in 2019. Durant's had six coaches to just two playoff wins. By the way, LeBron James since 2019, two coaches and has a championship ring. Kevin Durant, since leaving Golden State in 2019, this is before the pandemic, before the pandemic, has had more coaches than playoff series wins. The great Kevin Durant. And those two playoff series wins, by the way, were against some injured teams, the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Clippers. LeBron, by the way, just two coaches. The coach killer LeBron James, not the GOAT because he fires coaches. Two coaches in six years. Got a championship and another Western Conference Finals prediction. Uh, appearance. So here's the timeline of Kevin Durant's coaches. So he leaves Golden State for Brooklyn, and they have Kenny Atkinson. But then him and Kyrie say, eh, we don't like that guy. Get him out of here. They fire him. Jock Vaughn interims for a couple of games, and then they get their guy, the former player Steve Nash. All good, right? Then Katie and Kyrie are like, ah, we don't like him anymore. And then after two years, he's fired. And then Jock Vaughn coaches again until Kevin Durant demands demands out of Phoenix. And then until Kevin Durant demands out to Phoenix. And now he's in Phoenix with coach of the year, Monty Williams, for th- just, you know, three months. <laughs> three months. He has his new coach now, coach of the year, Monty Williams, for just three months until they fire him after his second round exit. And then the Suns hire former champion Frank Vogel. And then he is fired a year later after getting swept in the first round. And now Kevin Durant is on coach number seven in Coach Bud. And I wonder how long that lasts. Like all this yap about all Braun being a coach. Kevin Durant is running through head coaches like Kendall Jenner runs through NBA boyfriends. They don't see year two. Kevin Durant's the coach killer. His coaches are one and done. His coaches don't see year two. Look at all these coaches gone after a season. Six coaches. I don't even think it's it's not even been six years, seven coaches. This is the same dude, by the way, who went on Instagram live with Kyrie Irving and said they didn't need a head coach. Same dude. Oh, we we just we like to play our games. We really don't need a head coach. Now, are the coaching firings on him 100 percent? No, because I don't think Steve Nash was quite ready for the job. Frank Vogel, you know, Kevin Durant said he didn't really know his role on the team. There's not the coaches weren't perfect. But Kevin Durant chose those coaches. He chose to leave Golden State. Now, I'm not one of those people who criticize Kevin Durant for leaving Golden State like a lot of people in the media do. I criticize him for going to Golden State. I actually appreciated him leaving so he can go prove his legacy. But the way the trajectory he chose to prove his legacy was awful. 
you you had you chose Brooklyn with Kyrie. They had Kenny Atkinson, a playoff head coach. He's one of the most respected assistant coaches in the league. Actually, won a championship as an assistant in Golden State after you left. He declined head coaching job offers, and you fired him for Steve Nash after Jock Vaughn coached a couple games. You wanted Steve Nash, and you fired him. And then Jock Vaughn coaches, then you go to Phoenix. And when you go to Phoenix, you inherit their head coach, Monty Williams, 60-win coach of the year, coached in the NBA Finals, and then they fire him after three months because you guys lose in the playoffs. And then the next year, with championship aspirations, once again, you fire Frank Vogel, the Phoenix Suns do, after being swept in the first round by a 22-year-old. And now you have another NBA champion head coach who's been fired. So, like, all this yap, it was so crazy. And I waited another day to give this takeoff, too, because I was really trying to hear all this nonsense. Because when Darnham gets fired, it's all about, I'm seeing all these first take topics about this hurts LeBron's legacy. It's nothing to do with Darvin Ham being a joke of a head coach and not ready for the situation and always having his hands in his damn pockets. It's about LeBron James and how he just runs through coaches. Then when Kevin Durant has another coach fired, it's all, oh, Frank Vogel was not good. I wish I had a clip of back-to-back first take clips of, like, how they treated Vogel and Ham. And well, the Suns just didn't build a right roster and – Nothing about Kevin Durant since Oklahoma City, since Golden State, is running through head coaches. It's not all on LeBron. It's not all on Kevin Durant. But keep the same energy if you're going to blame LeBron for these coaches. Keep the same energy for Kevin Durant. I appreciate everyone for coming into this episode of Some Casual Takes. I'm back after I get through these last leg of exams. We're going to be grinding all summer. Um, Some Casual Takes is the handle for all my social medias to stay updated on all things related to the show. Until next time, see you.